Now, of course, we could just go here and say, okay, well, we want to create a change, uh, move uh, the servers to the cloud, um, and that's okay. And then we can kind of uh, convert this into um, a blank sub ticket, and we're going to have a link between the two tickets, and that's going to be great. Um, but one of the reasons why it's uh, kind of good to create uh, rather than um, uh, converting uh, this uh, to a, a blank sub ticket as opposed to converting it into a, a via a ticket template is that you can build in workflow with a ticket template in that uh, you can say that well when the sub ticket is uh, kind of uh, completed you can automatically reopen the ticket so to create a ticket template you just head over to your tasks app here um, and then uh, we're going to go to ticket templates like so and add a ticket template so we're going to call this one um, uh, kind of a normal uh, change a request um, and we'll set the subject line to uh, say normal uh, change request from a problem um, we're going to say uh, we can apply this to a ticket manually as well so this is where you know when you create an ad hoc task it could be a you know a change for anything uh, you can apply it to that uh, and then we're going to add the tag here open ticket um, and so this tag will only get uh, added to the ticket at the point that the, um, the sub ticket that we're creating is uh, completed. Uh, and so we can build, then build a trigger that says when a ticket is uh, updated, contains the tag open ticket, then reopen the ticket. And this will allow us to, uh, from a problem manager's perspective, um, spin up a change ticket and then uh, we'll set it, we can set our uh, problem ticket to on hold so we don't have to worry about it until the change ticket is completed. So um, <clears throat> let's uh, set, the, so we've got the uh, subject, um, actually uh, actually we might set the subject to, uh, to, to this instead. So we're going to go um, change request, uh, that way it makes those tickets that have been spun up as change uh, easily identify in your Zendesk views. Uh, task name, that's going to be pulling the name of the task that's been typed out uh, in the parent ticket, in the, uh, uh, i.e. in the problem ticket. And then this is going to say uh, RE problem uh, ticket ID, or you could even go ticket title of the, uh, the problem ticket, so you can see what the problem uh, ticket's called. Uh, and then what we can do here in the, uh, the, the internal node or uh, uh, the public node, it's up to you how you want to do it, is we can kind of uh, use another Zendesk placeholder to kind of pull in uh, information. Um, for example, uh, you know, uh, ticket.latest uh, comment rich. Um, another way to do this uh, is actually um, uh, to kind of format it uh, to, to format it nicely uh, we've got this documented on our uh, knowledge base so if you go to sweethawk.com and then head over to the help center in the tasks uh, section here under um, dupli uh, I think it's uh, duplicating conversations and attachments into a sub ticket you can basically pull all the comments and and or sub tickets just by copying uh, this text here so kind of if we come back over to our account here and uh, paste in that uh, then this is going to give us a nice uh, kind of rich uh, version of what was in but basically it's going to be a copy of uh, what was in the uh, problem ticket and we can say you know uh, 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 um, kind of uh, here is uh, a change uh, request uh, ticket um, and then details from the originating problem uh, ticket uh, and then th that uh, that information there is going to be pulled in, pulled in. Uh, then we can set uh, kind of the assignee uh, and uh, you know who it's going to be uh, kind of so we've set the group there so we're going to set it to the change managers group we can assign it to whoever we want um, and then uh, we can set for example uh, you know uh, based on the default ticket form we'll set the uh, ch uh, kind of um, uh, ticket type here to change um, and uh, I think we, that's all we need to do for now um, probably set the, the priority uh, the status uh, to uh, new that's fine um, and uh, click OK here so now um, we have a normal change request to be able to kind of spin off our sub ticket so we can go here actually I'll just refresh the apps pane 
I'm going to say okay uh, convert uh, to new ticket and rather than just going into a new ticket we can have the option of spinning up a, a blank new ticket or using a saved um, uh, kind of template and if I use this saved template then uh, this will spin up that sub ticket uh, as you can see here and uh, as you can see here it's all the details have been set uh, in this sub ticket uh, as per the template that we set um, now there's always a link back to the uh, parent ticket as you can see here and vice versa there's a link to the um, uh, child ticket uh, once it's a sub ticket I cannot check it off anymore I have to wait until uh, the uh, this sub ticket is actually marked as uh, solved um, before I can do that so uh, now uh, what we want to do is in order to kind of have this uh, problem ticket reopen uh, when uh, the sub ticket is uh, completed uh, we can set up a trigger so we're going to go over here into our triggers and we'll just create a trigger that looks for the uh, open ticket tag so we'll say add trigger and say uh, open ticket based on open ticket tag um, and then we're going to say when a uh, ticket uh, actually we can just say when tags uh, contains at least one of the following open ticket then set the status of the ticket to open and remove the tags now we will remove the tags because we don't want this uh, kind of trigger to loop um, indefinitely so we can say uh, remove the tag open underscore ticket Okay, and then we're good uh, to go. Um, actually, we have to set the category, so it's gonna just, we'll set it into the the, um, the default category for now. But you know, you can set that however you want. Okay, so uh, now if we come back to the, the ticket template, we can see um, that. Uh, oh, sorry, that was field conditions. So if we go back to the ticket template, we can see that when this uh, a ticket in this case is is completed, it will get the open ticket tag the trigger will fire, it will open the parent ticket. So from a problem manager's perspective, now that we've got this change ticket created, I can actually mark this ticket as uh, on hold. Um, in this case, uh, I haven't got that switched on because <laughs> it's a brand new account. So I'm just gonna mark this as uh, pending. Um, but uh, yeah, if, you, if you're not using the on hold uh, kind of status, you can easily switch that on by going to your uh, Zendesk uh, kind of uh, fields here and having a look for uh, status Oop. like so and you can uh, kind of enable on hold status like so uh, but either way uh, this uh, is going to um, uh, where were we uh, let's go close these tickets out and we'll just have a look at our problem tickets so we can see our problem tickets here we don't have anything open uh, we'll now mark this one as on hold. We'll just have to refresh the screen. So we mark it as on hold because it's, it's waiting, you know, pending is usually waiting for the customer to get back to you. But in this case, we're not waiting for any customer. We are waiting for a third party, that is uh, for this change ticket to be completed. Um, so uh, that's why it gets on hold. Now, we don't have to worry about this. Uh, like I said, uh, it will be automatically reopened based on the trigger that we just set once the change ticket is completed. So now we can move over to our uh, kind of our change uh, view. So I say change view, but we don't have one. So let's go and build a change view. Uh, so building a view is uh, quite simple. Um, we can just go to our, uh, where were we? Um, workspaces, views. Um, and we're gonna click on add view here. And we'll call it this one change uh, tickets. And then we can say uh, when a uh, the status is less than uh, solved um, and the ticket type is uh, change like so uh, and then I can kind of set whatever I want in here as far as uh, kind of fields goes like so um, and click on save so we've got our change uh, tickets. We just need to reorder that to get that underneath the problem tickets, uh, like so. Um, and 
if we, when we refresh here, we'll be able to see that we've now got change tickets view and we have this change request in here that's now uh, in an uh, open status. So uh, from a change manager's perspective, if this has been assigned to uh, me, then uh, I'm going to be starting to liaise with a, uh, firstly the, the uh, kind of problem um, manager uh, and any other departments uh, or what have you that need information uh, before we can get this uh, approved. Um, uh, so, and then I'm going to fill out the change fields. So I'm going to say, oh, this is a normal change. This has to do with the servers. Uh, the impact is high uh, and then fill out presumably another kind of 10 field fields as uh, kind of multi-line text fields, what have you, information that is uh, kind of pertinent to this approval <clears throat> um, uh, before spinning off an, uh, an actual approval. Now, uh, as far as um, this uh, flow goes, uh, w one thing that um, you can, you could ha happen as the instant that this uh, kind of change ticket is spun up is also to have an approval automatically applied. Now, as you can see here, we don't have any approvals uh, kind of uh, going at the moment, um, but you can have the approval kind of uh, uh, applied and, and requesting that certain information be filled in. But before we get to the approve app, let's uh, firstly uh, set up uh, the, the uh, you know, a change proposal uh, calendar. Um, so that way we can actually feed that information into the Approve uh, app as well. So, um